this meeting of the City School Board in order. Uh, first item on the agenda is a presentation of the colors by the Gates behind NRJ, NJROTC. Everyone, please stand. Forward, march. Call the guard. Hold. Left. Hey. Present. Colors. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. Carry colors, ready, cut, count to march, march. Color guard, halt. Right, hey, forward, march. Call guard, hold. Call guard, fall off. Yes, if you would, uh, yes, please, everybody can see. Yes, if you would, please tell us your name, your class, and your future plans at the end of the class. Hi, good evening. My name is Montserrat Jimenez, and um, for my future, I'm a junior, and um, I want to go into the Navy and get into the medical field. Good evening. My name is Jay Smith. I'm a junior in Gainesville High School. After high school, I plan on being a U.S. Navy pilot. Good evening. My name is Jennifer Proctor. I am in 11th grade. Um, after high school, I want to be a trauma nurse. Good evening. My name is Zoe Finelli. I'm a junior, and after high school, I plan on finishing my associate's degree and going into the Navy and getting into Naval Special Warfare. Thank you. Next time on the agenda are the district representatives. Recognitions, uh, and tell us about the teacher of the year and the retirees for Gainesville Exploration Academy. As Ms. Bowman makes her way up, she was one of the schools that when COVID hit, we were not able to recognize our heroes of the earth as well. So it's not we reckon last year's heroes of the earth. So our teacher of the year and district teacher of the year is Ms. Suzanne Cindia. And I just want to give you a couple little things about Ms. Cindia. She tells her students to write down their goals and to think big and don't limit themselves to just short-term goals. As students fulfill their goals, they celebrate those goals in the classroom. And I thought that was really amazing to be able to um, express yourself in the classroom. And when you do something really well with your goals, everyone celebrates them with you. Miss India was able to check off her own dream when she became a teacher at GEA. That was seven years ago. She said when she was a child, she would pretend that her siblings were her students. And when they'd lose interest in playing school with her, she'd opt to using stuffed animals. She was determined to get in as much practice as being a teacher as she could, even if her students didn't respond to her questions. Ms. Cindia taught first grade for five years before changing to third grade when an administrator, I don't know which one, came to her and said, how does third grade sound to you? And she said, I'm not sure, but I'll do whatever you want me to do. So she left her comfort zone and she said she worried that she wouldn't be prepared for that transition. She discovered something about herself though. Even though she's not much of a risk taker in her life, her own life, when it comes to her students, 
She's always willing to try new things and to create an exciting and rich learning experience for her students. Ms. Cynthia is known for her beautiful smile, her infectious laugh, and her willingness to always help others. Our GEA and District Teacher of the Year is Suzanne Cynthia. So I have to say I'm very proud of Miss India because for this picture she didn't have on her pajamas. Usually whenever we take a picture for her being district teacher of the year and for a teacher of the year at GEA, it just so happened it was pajama day at school by the time. And so for our retirees tonight, I'd like to recognize Ms. Marie Merritt. Ms. Merritt started working in 1991 as a substitute teacher for Gainesville City. In 1994, she joined Fair Street Elementary as the media clerk. In 2004, she became the QB clerk for Inova Elementary. 2006, she became a technology teacher at GEA. And then she rounded off her teaching career as a kinder teacher at GEA. We miss you and we love you, Ms. Merritt. Please come on up. That's what's more important. Thank you. And I'd also like to recognize Doug Bennett. He's not able to be here tonight, 
However, Mr. Bennett played football and basketball for Gainesville City Red Elephants when he was in high school. And in 2006, he began his teaching career with PE at GEA. He also assisted the coaching staff at the high school with the basketball team. And he completed this year or last year, 2020, with GEA, and we dearly miss Coach Bennett. And tonight, Mr. Sammy will take his award home to him. Okay. Ms. Masters is going to do our Heroes that Have Heard for Us. <clears throat> okay, it's my privilege to um, tell you a few things about our certified Hero of the Herd. These are things that the staff said about her. It says, makes the atmosphere of the media center a fabulous place for all students, teachers, and visitors. Goes above and beyond to help others, especially during our remote learning. Has a positive attitude and willingness to help. She's constantly reaching out to the staff to see if they need assistance. She's a delight to work with. And she's dedicated to our staff and students no matter what the circumstances. And that has been so true, even more so since these things are written as we've been going through things. So Miss Annie Vivian, our certified hero of the world. And then our classified hero of the herd, she has gone above and beyond to help the connections team here in remote learning. She's the hardest worker and most reliable para I have ever had the privilege to work with. She supports the students and encourages them to have confidence in their abilities. She builds relationships with the students. She has a positive attitude and takes on changes and challenges with ease. She's flexible and never complains. And now she's actually certified for us with Danny Little. Thank you, Ms. Cookwright, for uh, the short of you, Tony Bader, and the program. Um, we have any board conversations. Do we have any visitors from leadership all the county? No. Do we have any citizens coming? We do not. This does begin our business portion of the meeting, so if you need to leave, feel free to do so now. Thank you. Well, first, I want to begin by saying thank you to the board and Dr. Williams. 
for your leadership during the reopening of our schools this year, the closing of our schools for last year, and your thoughtfulness and consideration when making this part of decisions for our school staff. And I also want to say, and this is from the staff members too, thank you for the whole week of open house and being able to have those conferences with our parents. I think it's our parents' mind at ease about letting the students come back to their children come back to our school. We answered your questions, calm your fears. And then also for allowing us to be able to have that staggered opening at the beginning of school, being able to have that pre K through second graders come to our school, having the chance to acclimate them to the building, I think did a world of wonders for this year. The least amount of crime that I've ever experienced in school. Some years. It was great. So I want to talk a couple of things, a couple of things that were nurturing at our school so far this year. <clears throat> Back in October, I think it was October the 6th, we had our health department drive-through shot, flu shot. We had over 150 parents, students, and staff receive their shots that day. So I'm very thankful for that. Our parents were very thankful. Very convenient. They just drive in their car, get their shot, and drive away. Wow. Also, I want to say thank you about our playground equipment. I appreciate your contribution to help us get the new playground equipment. It was very sad to see those students look through the window at the beginning of school, not be able to go out there and play on it. So when we opened up at stage two, the students were allowed to go back on the playground and play on the equipment. They loved it. So thank you very much. And then another way that our students have been nurtured this year is through the mentoring program. GA has always done a great job with getting mentors into our students. This year has been a little different. We've had phone call after phone call from our mentors wanting to know when can we come back in mentors are not able to yet. So we set up the Zoom meetings for them. So on Friday, our mentors and our mentees at the school were allowed to Zoom together, and it is wonderful to see the smile. The kids are giggling, and it's just more normal this year having that Zoom conference with their mentors than it was at the very beginning in August or September. So this is great that they're able to do that. So a couple of our challenges that we've had this year. First, remote instruction. You know, going out last year, yes, we did the remote instruction. Our teachers did the best of their ability, and we focused more on the well-being of our students. So this year, when we started back and we did remote instruction, it took a lot technical skills. Teachers had to know all these different programs and how to do it, and breakout rooms and all the other components that went along with remote instruction. Um, they had to have that stable internet connection and they had to have electricity. So the storm came along in October. We were out for two days. We told teachers, this is your time to still Zoom, and still do your Google Classroom. So not only was it a challenge that our teachers had to learn how to do remote instruction, but they had to learn to do it without the electricity and without internet connection at their home. But let me say, our teachers, I got phone calls, I got text messages, we're in our car, I'm charging up my phone so that I can use my phone data and I can still Zoom with my kids. So I was very, very pleased with that. And they also made sure that I knew they were out there Zooming without their makeup on. So it warms your heart to know that even though this is a challenge for our teachers to have to do remote instruction along with regular instruction periodically, they do it to the utmost of their ability. So our beginning of the year Springer data showed us that K-2 students still need that extra support, more support than what they did in years prior, because they're still learning how to read, and this was a long time that they were out of school. So we're buckling down that extra peer support. Um, anytime we have extra time for a teacher, they're pulling small groups, and they're really getting our students to where they need to know how to read, learn how to read phonics, phonemic awareness, 
So they're doing all those things. And our three five, the data comparatively looks about the way it did 2004, uh, 2019, 2014, we're back in 2019. So even that being said, the students know how to read, we know that, but how much do they know, do they understand what they're reading? So that's what we're really focused on in three five. For math, it's a new screener this year. And it doesn't quite compare to the scores that we got from Ames Web, which is what we would use last year. But the iReady, the new math program, is K5 on the computer to do their assessments. So I think the different format is very beginning in school. Kids were getting used to having to get used to the format. And I think this time when we do our assessments, we're going to see much better scores for math too. And the iReady also has a personalized learning component to it called Pathways. And that gets, it starts where the child is at and builds upon their knowledge, which is a benefit to the teacher. So we have that two pieces of instruction going on of getting the students where they're at to where they need to be. Yes, everything is wonderful at GEA. We're just rocking and rolling. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, Ms. Bogart, will yes. you share with us uh, your, your core mentor, really, where they from and where what they do? The majority of our mentors are from Quest, Crest Wind, the living facility, housing facility over off the Brown Creek Road. And we have about 30 mentors. So far, the ones that felt comfortable doing Zoom, we have about 15 to 16 in that. Any other questions? Uh, thank you, Morris. Go ahead. Who won the contest? Uh, and thank you so much, Dr. Randy and for Miss Sandy coming over to our school. We had a um, character day contest for faculty, and our fourth grade team won that. So <laughs> congratulations to our grade team, and thank y'all for coming. We certainly do appreciate that. Very much. Well, I'd like to say once again, uh, thank you on behalf of the citizens of the Paul County for opening it up the door. Yeah, it went very smoothly, so thank you. All right, now do I have a motion to adopt, adopt the minutes? So moved that we adopt the minutes. We have a motion by Mr. Mitchell. Second. Second. Second by Dr. Randy, by Liz and Fagan. Would I like to make a motion to adopt and stand? Yeah. And you. Second. 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 We have a motion by Mr. Schmidt, and second by Mr. Norholz. All those in favor? All right. Uh, Dr. Williams? Yeah, you know, in Gainesville City Schools, we live on a model of one Gainesville. And as we inspire, nurture, challenge, and prepare our youth for what's next, we know at some point people invested in us to be what we are today. So Gainesville and Hall County definitely has a history of people who have done exactly that. You see a need, you respond, that's what we're called to do. One of those influential visionaries is Ms. Bueller Rucker. Uh, and we've asked Ms. Charlene Williams, uh, and today in particular, Mr. Ricky Young, uh, to come and talk a little about Ms. Bueller Rucker, her impact on Gainesville and Hall County and just uh, how she continues to impact the area today. So, Mr. Young, it is no coincidence that once he retired, COVID came. As a, <laughs> as a retired economics uh, teacher, uh, he knew what was coming. And so he decided to retire before COVID is. Is that accurate? As an old school teacher, the technology did what the young did and with COVID. Um, yeah, I, knew I, I thought you just saw the economics coming, so you're like, I'm done. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Young, for being here on behalf of the college. And thank you. And to the Board of Education, we thank you for allowing us. Thank you for allowing us to present this evening. I'm a member of the Board of the Duma Rucker Foundation, and quite a few folks from the foundation are here today. Would y'all just stand up? So they, family members, grandson, great-granddaughters, board members are here with me. Uh, Duma Rucker, I, I'd like to tell a personal story as quickly as I can. 
I was born in Gainesville, December 3rd, 1957. My dad's family comes from Jackson County and has lived in Jackson and North County. My mom's family comes from Summerfield, Georgia, up in North West Georgia. And all the point of the is, I came to be born in Gainesville. Well, lo and behold, Beulah Rocker, when I was a kid, we called her Godmother. I have come to understand because I did major history or the economic state that she opened the school out the road. Yeah, first time out the road, out at the time. Uh, she wrote her own autobiography called The Rugged Pathway. It's 12 pages long. It's worth the read. I know you can get a copy from the North Georgia History uh, Museum. She was called Godmother, and when I knew her, she already was old and had pants, and she was always there. But anytime there was a function going on, you had to speak to Godmother. Now, most folks have got parents that's designed by their parents. Godmother was a whole lot of people's parents because all of those kids who came to the boarding school referred to as Godmother. Come to find out, my mother and three of her sisters from a family of 12 children, where seven of those children went to be with my school, all the way from Southern Georgia. It shows geography. She comes from space. Well, four of those mostly girls, one being my mom, stayed in Gainesville. They all became teachers. Three of them retired from Gainesville City Schools. And it was Martin retired from Rose Park Elementary. Laura May also retired from Canada Street Elementary. And my mother, Estelle Young, retired from Enoch. The school where Beulah was, she started the school in 19, she graduated with honors from high school in 1909. And it was the vision of her to build a school, a black high school, because they were not credible or available at the time. She started a boarding school because people were too poor to send their kids, but they could work. It wasn't new. She went to school the same way. She started learning our ABCs from the paper that was in the cracks of the sharecropping house. She knew she wanted to be a teacher the first day. She did create the school. In the 50s, when the schools consolidated and her school came in with the county and city schools, she wrote this in, the school is now on the survey. Our high school is being transferred to the city, leaving us with the name for a day school. This institution operates an independent high school at night for those who are unable to attend school. Also, the Veterans Administration directed a full-time Veterans High School at night. The students are now making cement blocks for the administration building. Several thousand blocks have already been made for this purpose. Many students have finished here and have gone out into the world, helping others to rise to the scale, rise in the scales of civilization. A non-denominational school, its primary purpose is for the building of Christian character and the development of its citizenship. She instilled those characteristics in all of her students. I had a great love for teaching when I was a kid and didn't know where it all came from because I come from a family with five generations of educators. She influenced them all. Ms. Gwendolyn Brown's mother graduated in the 1955 class from the Duke of Rutgers School. I can start doing stuff like that, but I'm going to stop with that. Her influence continues because one reason I became a teacher is because of all the great teachers in my life. Godmother, you were right. My grandmother, who taught in one of them school from 1911 to 1941, and sent her children to further education. So it's really important. And that's her influence. And Miss Andrews, as you run the hub, the hub seems like the same kind of vision 
Ms. Rucker had for the needs of the children. And her influence will be felt for a long time. I put 40 years in as a teacher. Suzanne, Cindy, your teacher of the year, I taught her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just bringing all that up to say her influence. It may have been a rugged pathway, but the education was that important that it was worth it to her. And we want to remember her. And if by any chance the city of Gainesville, the Gainesville City Schools can pay tribute, we appreciate it. If you want to learn more history, I claim to be the historian and come see me. I can talk to you for days and days and days about it. A lot of folks in Gainesville don't know that bit of history. We shame what not to be the new. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is uh, discussion of bank's placement and extrapolation dollars for the foundation. Uh, this is Bell, Mr. Cheney. Mr. Cheney. Good evening. The Richard Shockley Scholars Fund was designed to provide various educational services to students, including field trips, uh, curriculum, and, and testing. During the past year, the monies were used and extended to support the advanced placement exams. They've been quite helpful. Uh, through the years, they've paid for various bits and pieces of those exams for our students in need. Uh, this coming year, the uh, Consolidated funds will be covering all of the AP funding, which is really a nice deal for our students. The students will have all of their AP exams covered through consolidated funds this coming year. Uh, the Shockley funds are available uh, if needed to support any other efforts with regards to testing. Uh, the current projected balance for our funds going forward in the, uh, the uh, Shockley Scholars Fund is $28,350.58. Um, this year, we're looking at a slight increase in our AP exam funding. Uh, there is a chance that those funds could be used for uh, pushing further AP testing or, or maybe proper needs. You can see that our AP numbers over the last number of years definitely increased uh, the number of courses we offer. Mr. Shin, you know, Dr. Jones talked about this, and how many AP courses we offer in Boston. This year, we have 27 courses being offered. We added one from last year. We actually have a, a group of AP Spanish students taking classes in each year. Right now, we're on par to spend more money for funds. We're probably 200, 200 exams short, but we haven't started our spring semester courses yet. And I, I, have, I have no doubt that we'll most likely hit that number. We're a little bit shy uh, this fall compared to where we were last fall. A lot of students were a little apprehensive since we started out remote. A little apprehensive about taking AP classes remotely with a teacher. Do you have questions? Mr. Chairman, the Ms. Shockley and her and her sons uh, helped spark this scholarship um, program years ago, and also wanted to include SAT and ACT test fees when needed. So in addition to the, the fees that you have covered in your report, uh, please know that those are allowable expenses or reimbursements, whichever is easier to uh, handle. But they do want to encourage students to take those nationally rigorous tests. We are all there. If there is a potential option, we also have some students looking to possibly test their bilingual seal as well. If that's something they're interested in, in supporting, I'm, I'm sure they would. Uh, Ms. Bell would be Ms. Bell would yes, and I would yes. We, we greatly appreciate the, the support that you guys have given to the AP program at Gainesville High School, and uh, we'll continue to push forward. Thank you. I, I really appreciated your newsletter and the fact that last year we had 45 different individuals, four or five across 13 different subject matters. It's highly impressive. 
It doesn't even count the untold number of threes and fours that you did for all that's achieved. It's, I think our AP program is really the end of the count. So uh, keep up the good work. I appreciate that. Thank you. We'll continue to just talk. Okay, next up, Mr. Sanders. <coughs> Well, I know that you all have the report just to update you on what we have been doing in, in the hospice first semester. Uh, there's no doubt that we've had to make some changes um, to accommodate uh, some of our health concerns and, and the guidelines there, but we are still making progress in supporting our students. Um, just to reiterate our focus areas, we support them in mental and behavioral health. That was an area that we committed to with community partnerships, and we even expanded that to um, the physical health piece this year. So we have uh, worked more with the nurses and the student health clinic than ever before. So we have expanded that piece with working with students' mental behavioral health as well as physical. Uh, the academic supports are still in place, uh, which is the second area, and then also the basic. So we still work with our social worker to provide those supports. Um, and then we have our continued partnership uh, with uh, UNG, with the health system. Uh, we have a resident uh, physician that comes every Tuesday and works in our clinic with us and works with students and gains experience there and also works with our CTAD uh, program to, so that our students can be exposed to different careers. So while things have Changed and they may look different than what we had anticipated when we had the ribbon in January. We're still uh, offering this support to our students this year and we'll continue to do so. Thank you very much. Do you guys have any questions? Uh, two things. Uh, one of you, please chime in about the award that the superintendent accepted uh, from the school. In Georgia School Superintendents Association, uh, we were awarded uh, middle of October. Uh, with our pioneer Risa in our region as uh, one of the presidents of the work uh, from the president of GSSA. Uh, very proud of our team. I mean, just all together, the way the community came together, Ms. Sanders, Ms. Bell, Mr. Green, uh, NGHS, the Medical Center Foundation, everybody just, they saw the need. And to be able to be a part of that, to make that happen, uh, definitely something that's a testament to putting Ms. Sanders in their role to help lead those efforts at the school. We did have to take kind of a step back a little bit due to COVID, but we also realized there were new needs uh, that students had during that time because of the footage. And so the hub is doing exactly what it's intended to do, which is meeting the needs of our kids as they, as they change uh, throughout. Also, I hope, I hope it's not inappropriate for, to ask for visual uh, recognition for the medical center and its golf tournament proceeds from the 2019 uh, Somewhere inside the club is a visual reminder and, and a thank you to that group for supporting. Absolutely. We have one plaque um, or a picture that's right when you walk into the main office. We also have um, a recognition of all the sponsors. Um, and so we can definitely look into doing a plaque that's going to be more you know, from the picture. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Sanders. All right, what were the uh, 2021 board dates? Yes, yeah. at one of our previous meetings, uh, it was discussed about changing our start time from 6 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. You will see on the 2021 uh, board meeting schedule, uh, you have locations, uh, like for example, in February, we'll actually be meeting back here but we'll be recognizing centennials. We do have to meet at the high school because uh, this venue is booked that evening. Uh, so for the most part, you see we are going to be back here every month for the main meetings because we can spread out. We still recognize a small number of individuals. So you will see the schools will be recognizing the parentheses. And down at the bottom, we do not yet have the scheduled location for the second half of the year uh, that we are waiting to finalize a couple of things uh, once the new year. Uh, comes in. So we'll bring back those locations, which will either be here the board office of the school, one of our pre standard locations. So tonight, 
I'm recommending a board meeting schedule still the first and the third. Uh, we do push this on Tuesdays, uh, day after MLK, as well as day after Labor Day. But everybody else is the first and third Mondays. Does anybody have any comments or questions on this? Uh, I like to, I would like to entertain a motion to adopt so the calendar for the time and calendar. So a motion by Mr. Smith, a second by Dr. Randy. I live in favor. Mr. Jerry's. Uh, Mr. Patton, the uh, October financial statements. Mr. Green and 
previous team. On the next part, the uh, weekly code of reports, uh, Mr. Mimic, if you will please uh, click on that. Uh, one thing I do want to share with you, we are ending this first semester. We continue to update weekly uh, by site the number of new COVID cases. Uh, the reason we do not do this uh, in a different way is we may find out about a case on Monday, but they might have been tested last Wednesday. So they've already been absent from school, so you can't really, you don't really know why they're absent until the report comes back. So we report this information. You can see we had nine new cases uh, this past week compared to four of each of the two previous weeks. The quarantines are down. Our teams are doing a great job. Our teachers are doing a great job. The admin are doing a great job of just going in to ensure that our seating charts are accurate. Our families are doing a fantastic job of going in and if the child is sick, let's keep them home. Let's wait a couple of days. If we have symptoms, let's get them tested before we bring them back to school. So it's definitely been a learning curve uh, for all of us. You can see we did have one week that was fairly high with 216 total uh, quarantine. For the last few weeks, it, it's looked, it looks, it's looked great. Uh, just really, really proud of the whole team. You know, you look at other areas and some of that spikes in different ways. Our community has really uh, rebounded and responded well. Uh, to some of the spikes back in April and May. So our goal is to continue to operate school just like we've operated since early September. Uh, I do have a, a concern that not necessarily what well, Thanksgiving will impact Christmas because we will have that two-week break for the winter break. But I do worry a little bit about late January to early March. Uh, that's typically when it gets a little colder, uh, people will be more inside, but also when we may feel some of the effects from the winter break. So we're going to continue to monitor these daily as well as weekly, continue to update the public, you know, based on the numbers. But one thing that we have learned in all of this, and you'll see it in the item in just a minute, is our kids are learning to transition well. And our teachers, and you heard Ms. Bogai uh, talk about some of our teachers uh, just responding. They need to respond to getting used to it, and just so proud of uh, what everybody's doing. Uh, on the uh, East Plus Bond Projects update, we do have the uh, new middle school. That was approved at the last meeting uh, for just under $36 million. We are continuing to do some committee work on attendance on the school name and mascot for the board to bring some of that to you here in the next couple of months. Uh, we'll also receive some feedback from the uh, public on a couple of those items. Uh, we do not have a groundbreaking ceremony set yet, but we're working with uh, Carol Daniel Construction to determine that time. Gainesville High School campus, board members, I appreciate it. Uh, you being able to see some of that building, the advanced studies uh, that came in just under $9 million, as well as the cafeteria media center. You drive by that campus now and you see a, little, a large void. Uh, you can see a lot of buildings now that you may not have seen before without having to walk around. But we're on track, things are looking great, and uh, you can see the timelines that are there. We do have a groundbreaking ceremony uh, for Thursday at 10 uh, since, since this has been published. Uh, we have not opened it up to the public just because of COVID. Uh, but we'll have the board members there, we'll have the city council members there, media as well as uh, administration and students to help us with that, with that now, right? And the final item on here uh, is our virtual numbers. Uh, when we started in July to receive information from our student body uh, about who's interested in going virtual, uh, we wound up around 1,300 or so, and that dwindled down. We settled in right around 1,140 students. You can see that number. Uh, Ms. Hobson and her team have gone in and we've sent out information to families to give us your intent. What are you going to do next semester? Are you going to stay in virtual or are you going to come out? And so you can see the results of that survey. Uh, you also see, uh, for example, by school centennial has two students going to virtual that were face to face with 59 coming back. So a total of 657, so over 50% of the initial number that attend virtual school are now coming back to us face-to-face -face in January. Keep in mind, that's 657 students who have not been in a structured classroom environment since March. Some of those students have not been in a structured classroom environment, possibly pre-K to kindergarten. So one thing I would like to do, and Lord, I'd like to ask for a vote on this, although it's not only action items as a part of the superintendent's report. We know that the 657 students coming to us for the first time, and you heard Ms. Boatwright talk about the open house and how successful it was for our students and families just to see the safety protocols in place, meet with the teacher, the expectations. The reality is we may have 
Uh, teachers now teach in different grade levels because they're coming from a virtual or face-to-face -face environment. We also will have students that may have a different teacher because of the class size and some of those changes. What we would like to do on the calendar, uh, Mr. Newman, if you will pull up the calendar, is make that adjustment to where uh, this is the second attachment. Originally, uh, January, Tuesday, January 5th was going to be a student day uh, after we adjusted the calendar back in the fall. Uh, but now, because of that, we would like to dedicate that day as an open house day for those 657 students that are currently virtually be coming back face to face. We felt like it would be a disservice if all of a sudden we're putting students on buses and they don't know where to go, they don't know which classroom to go to, they haven't met the teacher. Uh, we did just sacrifice one instructional day. But I believe the long run is going to earn more by doing this. Uh, they just all about putting kids after you know a nine month uh, absence from that classroom. So uh, motion to amend the uh, twenty one school calendar. Got a motion by Mr. Smith. Got a second by Mr. Smith. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you, Dr. Williams. Mr. Stewart, that's my vote. Motion to adjourn. Got a motion by Mr. Smith. I hear a second. Got a second by Dr. Ramsey. All those in favor? Have a good evening, everyone.